there's a recent a wonderful experiment where you get illusory expansion, like in the pond's earth, and the corresponding region in the first stage of visual processing, called V1, actually changes its size by the apparent size of the illusory figure. So they're beginning to be physiological correlates of perceptual scaling, which is very, very exciting. The brain can't always make up its mind. I like these phenomena very much. And you get what I call flipping from one perception to another, which is entertaining or trying out one hypothesis and then another. You change the hypothesis. You change the interpretation of the data available. I'd like to show you that with a little model. Um, I've got here a model, which I'll put on the table for a minute, and then you'll see, I think, that that's a, probably a duck. But every now and again, it will look like a rabbit. And I think perhaps I'll hold it up. It might be better there. So there we've got a duck. And if I turn it around, it may look more like a rabbit. These may turn into ears. There it's a beak. The orientation can change it. But it is important to note that we'll flip from duck to rabbit or the other way around without my doing anything at all. Your brain entertains the possibility it's a duck or it's a rabbit. It's ambiguous. And this flipping is spontaneous, showing the activity, positive activity of perception, always trying to seek or select the best possible hypothesis. So these flipping things, very important for relating perception to brain processing. And the question then is, does the brain physically change when the thing goes from duck to rabbit? The answer is it does that when you change the hypothesis with no change of input to the eye, the brain also changes its activity as your experience changes. Uh, the hollow face illusion is, I think, in a way, in a way my favourite. I, I actually found this 30 years ago, and I've been sort of living with it ever since. It is very, very simple. It's simply a mask, the inside of a mask, if you like, which is actually hollow. So the nose is actually sticking away from you rather than towards you. But you see it as a proper face with the nose sticking out and not in. I'm going to rotate it a bit so that you'll see, I think, that it is really hollow. <laughs> it's going in. And not only that, I can actually I'll put it to there. I'll put my hand inside the mask, which is there, really hollow. But as soon as you can see the face as a face with the features, your brain refuses to see the thing as hollow because it's so jolly unlikely. Now, why is this? Your brain knows an awful lot about faces because you've experienced them all your life and they're terribly important. So it ignores a whole load of information that, available to the eye that is really hollow, shading, changes of size, all sorts of things like this ignores all that bottom-up information and it calls up the hypothesis, the perception, that this is a face. Embedded in that is the knowledge that noses stick out towards you when you look at a face. And that knowledge is called up and dominates the perception. And you know intellectually, if you like, that it's really hollow. You can touch it with your fingers, you can hear all about it from other people, from yourself. And it still looks convex when it's really concave. 